Well, folks, welcome to the, the fourth Sunday of the Easter season as we uh, slowly meander our way to uh, Pentecost Sunday. This is also a baptism Sunday, so uh, Donovan is here with us, right there, sitting right down there, somewhere. Oh, he's been, there, Donovan, over there. There you go. And we're going to be baptizing Donovan in a, in a little while, and all the family is here from uh, different places, from Three Hills, from Edmonton, and uh, from Poland, of all places. There you go. So uh, they come from far away to be part of the baptism. And uh, you folks are from Calgary, right? No? Where are you from? Oh, okay. So you're all, everybody traveled in, uh, in long distances. And by the way, they're all family, all my family. So this is awesome. So, the sun rises without fail. Oh, no, I'm going to do the prelude first. When we pray about the wounds we may have, we have come to believe the reason these wounds take so long to heal is that we spend more time attacking them than trying to understand them. Interesting, interesting, uh, interesting quote for the day. So the sun rises without fail, bringing a new day to earth. And we rise to embrace such a gift soon. Sunflowers, mountain ash, trees, purple asters, and potted petunias will stretch and wave in the breeze, singing praise with bold color, dancing leaves and wonderful fragrance. We will join them and praise the Creator with our whole being. And so this morning, we join together and we sing, Morning Has Broken. And I would just invite you to, to remain seated as we sing this song together, Morning Has Broken. You'll find it in your red hymn book on 409. Once again, welcome to everybody this morning, and uh, I have some announcements to, uh, to share with you. Um, next Sunday is the 28th, and uh, it's the final Sunday that I'll be here before I go on my sabbatical. And uh, it is a new membership Sunday, and uh, the, the members that are coming with uh, letters of transfer, and also members, new members that are doing the affirmation of faith. And uh, there are six people, and I would just like the folks that are, are coming uh, for that next Sunday to uh, just touch base with me quickly after the worship service and I just need to spend a moment with you and explain how it's going to happen uh, for that Sunday. And also, um, 
the, the concert, the concert's coming this afternoon, and there's tickets left. So, Cody, you want to talk about that for a second? So, the choirs, most of them are in black because they're already in their uniform for this afternoon. <laughs> black. Um, we're singing at the Bella Concert Hall as part of the 300 Voices Festival. There's actually going to be, I think it was 364 voices on stage at the end of the show, and the choir is singing two beautiful pieces. Um, with Scarborough United Church Choir as well. So please come out. There's still some tickets available 2 p.m. this afternoon at Mount Royal University, the Bella Concert Hall. We'd love to see you there. Perfect. And by the way, the choir has worked really hard for the last two months. Basically, I've kept them at work nonstop. Can we give a round of applause to this? Yeah. Choir? Next stop, Carnegie Hall. Right? There you go. Yeah. Well, do you also want to announce your next Sanctuary Sounds? It's coming up in May. You can just mark your calendars. Wednesday, May 15th, I'm doing a Gershwin program. I'll play Rhapsody in Blue, and I'll have two singers joining Gershwin, Irving Berlin, Cole Porter, all that type of music um, from New York uh, in that era, the Tin Pan Alley era. So look forward to seeing you there on May 15th. Well, Cole Porter was a small part of that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. And also, now, um, next Friday, next Friday night is our, our final concert of the year for Weasel Head Presents Concert Series. And we're having a group in from Leaf Rapids, Manitoba. And they're a four-piece band with drums and guitars and, the, and other various instruments. So uh, we have about 40 people signed up so far. We need 80 to, to, to break even, so just so you know that. And uh, they, they'll be coming here and it'll be an awesome concert because if they're already playing the music on the radio all week and they're talking about Weasel Hud Presents Concert Series. So I have the tickets here. If you can't buy them today, then just let me know. I'll put some aside for you. And uh, let's just make this a good one for the final, final concert of the year, okay? Weasel Hud Presents. Um, that's all the, the announcements that I have this morning. Are there any more? Ah. Of course there's one more. Everybody at Lakeview United knows what May, what happens in May. What is it? Garage. The garage sale, <laughs> yes. But you get a reprieve this year. Usually it's the first weekend in, in May. This year it's the 18th, which is the long weekend. So you have lots of lead time to start gathering your used things, to um, uh, engage all your family and the young members of the family to come and help, help you and to come to the garage sale. I have sign-up sheets. We will need bakers. We have a bake table, and so if you can start thinking about what you might want to, to bake. Uh, there's also a plant sale, so if you have cuttings that you can start now, and they would be ready for the 18th. Uh, Sign-up sheets are, will be on the Narthex table, and um, I will have a, a, a description of what the different positions are. But, go again. This year, our big garage sale. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Janet. So, folks, we are on Treaty 7 land, so uh, I would invite you to share with me on the screen or in your bulletin acknowledging our territory. People have lived on this land for thousands upon thousands of years. This land on which we gather is the traditional land of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksika, Pagan, Kainai, Tsutina, and the Stony Nakoda Nations, along with the home of our Métis brothers and sisters. We worship the Creator on this land and acknowledge with respect the thousands of years of ceremony and relationship that are etched in footprint, fire, and faithfulness on the soil and rock that surrounds us. So we share an opening call to worship with responsive. You'll find it in your bulletin. We share these together. So welcome to this place of worship. Welcome to this place of serenity and hope. Welcome to this Sunday of new beginnings and of God revealed. May each of us be open to the Spirit as it moves through our worship time and through each individual heart. It's Sunday once again, and in the rhythm of our living, we have come together again for worship. There may even be folks here who are here for the first time 
or have uh, been away for a while, and all may seem strange and new, but to most of us, it's familiar and warm, a safe place to be. We came looking for God and hoping to meet God through what is said and done in this place. So may our time together lift us up as we celebrate God's care for us and for all creation. So upon this Earth Day and this Baptismal Sunday, may we all focus ourselves on making this planet and all which exist upon it a true blessing to be shared and to be nurtured. So now we come with open hearts and prepare ourselves for worship. We call upon the presence of the risen Christ to touch each person here with deep joy, deeper compassion, and the deepest of love. So we are now in the presence of holiness, and our voices now come together to honor the God of the many and great works of the world. Our opening hymn, it's a song of praise to the maker. You find it in your multicolored hymn book, number 30, on the words will be up on the screen, and we'll stand with this hymn this morning. you all to be seated. We'll join together in our, our prayer of approach this morning. We share in these words uh, unison. Oh gracious God, we approach you this morning with some of our hearts being open and some being clouded by so many issues in life. May we sense the other's needs. May we find the common center 
as we worship in this place. Each of us knows that life is filled with hills and valleys, roads which can lead to somewhere and others which may have dead ends. What we call upon this morning, O oh, gracious one, is to offer us road maps which include all our destinations and how to get there together safely. Journey with us, worship with us, hold us close and make us one in the spirit. Open our eyes to love expressed in many ways. Open our ears to hear your good news and open our hearts to respond with thankfulness and praise. And we each say in our own way, amen. Oh, children's hymn. I'm going to invite Fiona to come up now and uh, share with us to draw the circle wide. Fiona some help here. Can I ask all the kids to come up? And we have any kids? Do we have any kids here? If you want some of your parents to come to, that's fine. I need your help making a circle. Elsie, go on. A well, thank you so much. There you go. <clears throat> that would be great. And we're going to sing a song about circles called make, uh, Draw the Circle Wide. Or at least they're going to sing it while we make the circle. Let's just make a circle. We're going to start with a small one, and it's going to get bigger and bigger. So. I want Elsie over here. Come on, Elsie. Oh. Come on over here. There you go. All right. All right. I want to play too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Start. Okay. You have to live with the word.
Ah, can everybody hear me? I have got a picture to show you. Now, it's up on the screen, but I'd like to show you my coffee. It's a picture with quite a few circles, or at least you can only see half the circles. So take a good look. And do you see on this picture, there's a mother and a child right in the middle. Do you see? So this is like when we're born in a human family. There's that first circle. And then there are more circles. Do you see? When we're born, we are also one of God's creatures, creatures made by God. And can you see all the creatures? Tell me if you see any. What do you notice? See, they're, and they're all connected. That's a very good point. I see fish. What do you guys see? Yeah, there are lots of creatures. I think, you know, some of the adults, they probably can't see on the screen. So can you tell them what there's there? Fish, fish, turtles, frogs, butterflies, elephants. You're all, all kinds, aren't there? Yeah. Look. Is there a little bunny? Do you see? Oh, look. There's a butterfly and a frog. Oh, <laughs> there's an owl down there in the corner. And you're right. There's a snake. That's another bird there. You're right. So... Do you so also see, besides the creatures, there are people, you're right, do you see that there's something around the child in the middle that's reaching up? Do you see that? Sort of up towards the sky. Could it be that something in this child is reaching up to God? This sort of insinuates that God's in the sky. Do you think God's in the sky? You think God's in the sky? That's interesting. Do you think God's in the sky? No, where do you think God is? Everywhere. Everywhere. Actually, that is a very good answer. Everywhere. I agree with you. I think God is in the sky, in the earth, in people, everywhere. In the day, in the night. Now, when you're baptized, you become part of another big family, a big circle. This family is so big, it's all the people here, all Christian people all around the world, all the Christian people who've ever been. That is a huge, huge family. And what happens when you're baptized? The minister, that's Yope, takes water and marks a, marks a cross on the head of the person being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, that's Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, who never leaves us. This spirit, spirit helps us reach up to God. At baptism, you're turning to God, becoming part of this big family, a big family of people who want to love and help each other to live good lives, be good people. Now, can we pray together? Thank you, God, that we are born into a human family. Thank you that we are all your creatures, some of many amazing creatures that you have made. Thank you that we get to welcome a baby into your family this day. This family is getting bigger and bigger. Amen. You might want to stay where you are so you can see all the action which is going to happen in a minute, over there at the font. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you. That's for you.
What a beautiful smiling face. Reminds me of me when I was a baby. <laughs> well, folks, we come to celebrate God's gift of new life through the sacrament of holy baptism. And baptism is a sign of belonging to the body of Christ. It's a visible sign of a most awesome, invisible grace. We're here to welcome our newest member into the whole worldwide faith community, and it's Donovan Sean Brecken. And this sacrament of baptism proclaims and celebrates the grace of God. By water and spirit, we are called, we're claimed, and we're commissioned. We're called God's own, welcomed as children of God, and we are claimed by Christ, united with one another in the Christian community, every time and every place. We're commissioned to Christ's ministry of love and of peace and of justice, and we're strengthened by the Holy Spirit for the work of the church in the world. At this time, I want to invite a member of our, our council, and it happened just to be Fiona Hayes, uh, to introduce our special guests this morning. On behalf of the official council of Lakeview United Church, here in Calgary, Alberta, I'm pleased and truly honored to present Sean and Stacy Brecken. You stand. And they are with us to experience the sacrament of holy baptism for their son, Donovan Sean Brecken. Give a bit of a turnaround so everyone gets to, to see him. So Sean and Stacy are here with their sponsors, I believe Doug and uh, Christina. At this time, I would invite Stacy and, uh, and Sean to um, just come on up for a moment together. <clears throat> Well, you might want to bring Donovan, too. <laughs> Come on up here. I thought they'd be great, so. So, Sean and, uh, and Stacy, do you uh, seek baptism for Donovan in this community of faith, Lakeview United Church of the United Church of Canada? If this is your wish, I would have you repeat after me, yes, we do. Yes, we yes, do. We do. So Sean and Stacy, do you believe in God, the source of love, in Jesus the Christ, who is love embodied, and the Holy Spirit loves power? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So desiring the freedom of new life in Christ, do you seek to resist evil and to live in love and to live in justice? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. And do you proclaim the Christ as having been crucified and risen in your words and in your actions? And in Vish's response, we do God being our helper. We do, we do God, God being our helper. helper. Okay. Will you join with all of your brothers and sisters in the larger community of faith to celebrate God's presence, live with respect and creation, and love and serve others? And we will, God being our helper. We will, we will God, God being our helper. helper. Good, okay. At this time, I would ask the sponsors of uh, Donovan to just stand for a moment. So, Christina and Doug, I'll be calling you up momentarily when it comes time for laying, laying out of hands. As the sponsors of Donovan, may you recognize that many persons nurture and influence the lives of children, and you are being invited to fulfill this most important role. Will you support Donovan and his parents as they all grow in their faith? If this is your wish, then please respond with, I will, God being my helper. Well, thank you. You can maybe be it for the moment. So Stacy and, and Sean, you are making an important decision, which you're making on behalf of Donovan, for you're seeking the living water for your beloved son. So may this moment of grace be etched in your hearts, as you not only become one with the Christian Church Universal, but also as chosen and blessed children of God. At this time, I want to invite all of you folks present here to stand, if you're able.
Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer to all God's gift of grace in baptism. So do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, your support, and your care for Donovan and his parents at a distance or closeness? If this is your promise, then repeat after me, we do by the grace of God. We do by the grace of God. That's pretty good support there, Stace. I wanted you to know that, okay? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, while this is happening, <laughs> let us join together and proclaim the mystery of our faith with our new creed. And uh, you'll find the words on the screen uh, if you don't know them already, but they'll also be in, uh, in your bulletin. So we're sharing these words together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, and who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So may God be with us, all of us today, as we gather together, lift up our hearts to the one who dreamed each of us into existence. Let us give thanks to the creative force of the universe, the creative force of mother and father and child and of love. This water of life which is to be poured represents the flow of life which nurtures us and which sustains us. The water of life. Moment of prayer. Eternal God, whose spirit moved over the waters of creation, who saved Noah and his family from the flood, and who led the Exodus people through the sea, make these waters a place of blessing and hope for Donovan, this child of hope. May these poured waters be a reminder to his family and to all of us present of the power of the spirit and the significance of this day. May the God who created the seas give Donovan a deep calm. May the God who created stars give him radiant light. The peace of a deep sea calm be his. The peace of a deep forest quiet be his. And the peace of the mystic's inner silence be his. And the peace of the blessed three be his to eternity. Amen. <laughs> so what is a child's complete name? Donovan Sean Brecken. Donovan Sean Brecken. I baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Son. I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Donovan, from this day forward, you bear the sign of Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. Amen. I would invite now you folks to come up and we're going to do some uh, laying out of hands here, okay? Fiona too. Mm -hmm. Come on up. Come around. 
laying on of hands. You're beautiful, you know that, Donovan? <laughs> Donovan, may the Holy Spirit, God's light be in your life and guide you, inspire you, and work within you all the days of your life. And we all say, Amen. 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 <laughs> So if you, I'm going to invite Fiona. I like this candle. For Donovan. And we all say. Amen. I'm going to take him and take him for a walk. I'm going to sell Donovan. I'm going to bring you to somebody. We're going to sing a song. It's called Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. You can remain seated. You know, Stacy and Sean, uh, Donovan will come back to you, okay? <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> well, we're going to do some scripture reading this morning, this morning and um, I'm going to invite uh, Elizabeth to come up in a moment. And the question I asked myself concerning the, the first scripture passage is, why does something so good cause so much trouble? Why does the healing of a lame beggar in Jerusalem, who was lying in the dust outside of the temple and ending the day walking like a new man, leaping and dancing, bring the entire family of the high priests to interrogate Peter and John. I call it widespread suspicion or a nasty crackdown by the authorities and possibly something much larger, a theological confusion for Peter never stated that he had the power to heal, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. There was, there was the healer, and the authorities couldn't get it. So Peter had to set them straight on where the healing came from. And I'm going to invite Elizabeth now to come and share that with us. <clears throat> Oh, a shoe. <laughs> Way to go, Mom. <laughs> First scripture reading today is from Acts 4, verses 5 to 12. The next day, the rulers elders and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, who all were the high priestly family. 
When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked, This man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom they crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the, the and Peter testified before the high priest. So our second passage is First John. And when you hear this passage, which Elizabeth is going to share with you, it's not really about being a martyr and being burned at the stake or hanged or killed. It's about let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Laying one's life down for one's brothers and sisters in this passage is simply responding to people in need, not dying for people in need, but giving them what they need from our abundance. So uh, love in action, period. I'm going to have you share this with us. Whoops. <clears throat> That's okay. <clears throat> the second reading is the first letter of John 3, verses 16 to 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sisters in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he had commanded us. All who obey us commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Mm -hmm. Please join in the hymn of illumination, Psalm 23, in Voices United, number 747, The Lord is My Shepherd.
John 10, 11 to 18. You know, folks, sometimes, sometimes we go astray. Sheep that are ill may follow the voice of a stranger instead of a sheep herder. There are many voices out there in the world vying for our attention. There are many distractions which lure us from the path. But in our choices each day as we practice our faith by saying yes to some voices and saying no to others, Jesus is there going before us and leading us. He's a good shepherd. I'm going to share this passage, gospel passage with you this morning. I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches him and scatters them. And the hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received his command from my Father. This is a part of the good news that we're listening to this, this morning. So what is a true shepherd? Well, in reading through the, the Gospel of John, I, I, the writer is truly a mystic. This Gospel is so different from the others. And Jesus is personified in so many different ways. Jesus is the way. He's the door. Jesus is the vine, Jesus is the light, and so on. They're all of the different designations, which each in their own way are truly poetic, and they're truly prose in motion. The writer really got the message, and it's for us to embody, to understand, to hold it close. And today's gospel is no less as moving or vivid as the others. Jesus is the good shepherd. Well, I don't know about you, but for myself, if I was a sheep, I would rather have a good person looking after me, looking after all my needs, a warm place in the winter, plenty of food, lots of water, a clean pen and lots of open grazing in the seasons where it doesn't snow, you know what I mean, a, a, good, a good shepherd. Well, and this goes for cattle too, or horses, or bison, or any other animal which needs to be tended to have good shepherds or good owners. What would it be like during calving season, or when the lambs or colts are being born, and the ranchers or the sheep herders, or those who are mixed farming would all be in, in Arizona on holidays? Probably a bit of mayhem would happen. Well, the writer of John states that Jesus is the good shepherd 
who would go as far as to lay down his life for somebody else. That's a huge undertaking. It's a huge risk. I'm not sure that all of us would want to take such a risk, but folks, we need to. We need to, for I believe that we're becoming way too apathetic in our relationships with each other. It's called surface living. And we don't feel that we need to delve deeper for fear of pain to ourselves and maybe to others. It's a risky thing. And uh, Jesus is inviting all of us to risk. Risk being the shepherd that would give it all. Risk what the community may gossip over the coffee times together. I think you understand what I'm, what I'm saying with this. Well, I believe that ministers are shepherds, and myself included to a certain degree. We are entrusted with the formidable task of helping people triumph over life and death. Spiritual life and death. We have the privilege of ministering to those as they face their own valley of the shadows. It could be at a bedside or, or counseling in my office or many other forms of ministry. Our task is to enable those who are facing possible terrible times and to do so in a spirit of openness and a spirit of faith. Our natural tendency, believe it or not, is to shun that which causes pain. Does that sound familiar to you sometimes too? Well, guess what? Sometimes ministers also need shepherds to guide them through the valleys. So the family of God, all of you, all of you, sometimes may need to be instructed in ways that you too can shepherd others through the valley of the shadows. So that shepherd becomes a good shepherd. So this implies that there must be bad shepherds. I wonder what that looks like. The writer of John calls him an employee. That's interesting. And of course, we could argue this point because for myself, I've known countless employees who would give it all. And I've also known countless employees who only wait for payday. But the writer of this gospel implies that it's through love where the most importance must sit. This true, deep, giving, sacrificing love like the love of a parent for their children, the love of a cat or a dog owner for their pet, the love of most of us for our ailing parents or our grandparents, we become the good shepherd. We become ministers of love. Now, as the writer of John talks about the hired hand or the employee, let me share with you some brief statistics in terms of ministers. You ready for this? A poll was taken, and a little less than 10% of those polled would leave the ministry for a higher paying job. How's that? Over 70% reported that pay was not a key factor or whether or not they remained in the ministry. And 86% cited a strong sense of call as the reason they remained in the ministry. And 83% stated that they would do it all over again. And these may be figures pointing towards paid accountable ministries, but they could also be statistics in your own life, as each of you be or are the good shepherd. So on this fourth Sunday of the Easter season, as we've sung, sang the song a few minutes ago, God is my shepherd, let each of us be shepherds to many and bring this community of faith to even a higher level for each of us, our pilgrims on a journey of faith. Amen. The presentation of our offerings and here, O oh God, is one way that we live out our baptismal promises in our act of offering our gifts for the, the ministry and mission of this church, your church, so that the word may be shared and your justice supported here and around the entire world. So our offering will now be received and we're going to listen to
Four Strong Winds by Larry Nickel. Yeah, and Ian Tyson. And Larry Nickel's the one looking after the whole thing at the Bella. Yes. Interesting. I invite you to just close your eyes for a moment as I offer a word of prayer and thanks on the gifts that have been given. Oh, Holy One, it's, uh, it's an offering of love that we give on this Sunday morning. It's an offering we give from our abundance. And may you bless these gifts as you bless each of us. And may these gifts always be used for the furtherance of the good news in this community and in this world. Amen.
So our final meditation we're going to be doing is interspersed with uh, the song in your, in your More Voices uh, hymn book, number 85. And you'll find it in your multicolored book. It's Take, O oh, Take Me As I Am. Maybe you can play it through once, Cody. we share in these words. Let us pray for those whose lives are wilderness, those who are hungry and thirsty, those who are all alone, and those who are prevented from being the people God made them to be. For the stone which the builders rejected has made the corner. Yet gave me as I am. Let us pray for those whose own will not receive them, those who are not listened to, those who are under constant threat. For the stone which the builders rejected has made the corner stone. Let us pray for those whose calling is denied, those who cannot speak their name, those whose gifts are not recognized and affirmed. For the stone which the builders rejected is made the corner stone. O oh, take, O oh, take me as I am. Let us pray for those who are judged and condemned, those who are blinded by their own self-righteousness. Let us pray for ourselves. For the stone which the builders rejected is made the cornerstone. O oh Christ, you lived as an ordinary man, not in style, but simply. Yet you still caused an uproar and questions everywhere. You drew the expectations of hungry crowds you brought buried conflicts to the light. May we, who are sometimes swayed by the crowd's approval and who often avoid conflict for fear of its cost to us, stand firm in the gospel of justice and peace and follow faithfully in your way of compassion and solidarity with those who are poor and excluded, wherever it may lead us, O oh, take, Oh, take me as I am. We share in the words of the ecumenical version of the Lord's Prayer. God who cares for us, the wonder of whose presence fills us with awe, let kindness, justice, and love shine in our world. Let your secrets be known here as they are in heaven. Give us the food and the hope we need for today. Forgive us our wrongdoing as we forgive the wrongs done to us. Protect us from pride and from despair and from the fear and hate which can swallow us up. In you is truth, meaning, glory, and power while worlds come and go. Amen. So our final hymn is Praise God for this Holy Ground and you find it again in your multicolored hymn book number 42. I invite you to stand and we'll sing this song together. Yeah. 
We share in the words together. And now, knowing our membership in the great family of God, we leave this time and place of worship with open hearts, with stronger faith, with clearer purpose that we are God's family to one another and to God's world. May we go in confidence and promise for the Spirit is with us. Amen. Well, folks, as I invite you to go out into the world, may each of you know that you are such beloved children of God and always be mindful of your baptismal uh, wishes, your baptismal hopes and dreams. So, folks, go in peace. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.